Welcome back, fight fans, diehards, tryhards, and everyone in between. We are back with another video covering the insane regional indie MMA highlights that happened this past week so you can get your fix. And it is all thanks to the badass Kaposa, who you have to be following on Twitter at Grabaka underscore Hitman for more highlights just like these. What's going on, everyone? It's the casual Lawton Veerkant, and this is Kaposa's Corner. Getting things going this week, we are heading to MMA Series 32 in Moscow, Russia. This fight sees Kazbek Apayev making his pro debut, taking on Andrei Biryukov, who only has a 1-0 record. This fight wastes absolutely no time getting into the action, and it's a brawl. Finally, Apayev lands his huge head kick, rocking Biryukov bad, who somehow survives the kick, but in his final fleeing moment, he gets welcomed by this nice left hook. Mouthpiece out and all, confused on the floor, his scrambling to gain some momentum back after that huge kick just unfortunately wasn't enough. And Apayev secures the win and makes a pretty noteworthy pro debut. We've got one more fight from MMA Series 32, and this sees Vyacheslav Garaskin showing a 3-4 and four record, going against Erbol Dzakipov, who has an 0-3 eh, oh record. If history repeats itself, I think my money is on Garriskin. Something about the Russians and wasting absolutely no time, this one is a banger and quick. And what's crazy is that this first left hook, which is huge, isn't the final blow. Dzakipov survives, but just like clockwork, a missed spinning back kick is really just a cover up for this second left hook and that is all it takes. Good Lord, the wind-up on that from his spinning momentum, and Garriskin lands this win and improves his record to 4-4. Four four. Next, we are going to World Warriors Fighting Championship 19 in Ukraine. This fight sees Vitaly Yakimenko sitting at a 1-0 pro record, up against Roman Akremchik, who has a 3-2 record. We all love him fast here at Kaposa's Corner, so how's 15 seconds on the first takedown attempt? Absolute unfortunate timing for Yakimenko to try a takedown, and absolutely perfect timing for Akremchik to throw a knee to instantly flatline his opponent. Now, he was out for about two minutes, but Yakimenko does come to and is okay. And Akremchik secures this first round win, grows his record to 4-2, and two, and I hope can get some more fantastic knockouts like this one in his future. Now we're moving on to Titan FC 69. Nice. In the Dominican Republic for two fights. This first fight sees Ty Kalista sitting at a 4-4 four four record, and his opponent, Mike Olaya, who has an 0-4 record. Here we go again. In round one, Olaya is taking a beating and almost actually loses to a crucifix position, but narrowly escapes until this. Trying to, trying to go here. Yeah, I was about to say. Oh, oh he's going for the twister. twister. Oh, he's oh, going. Oh, wow. Terrible timing to switch cameras for the live feed, but this replay shows the beautiful transition Ty uses to get this insane twister submission. Perfect display from Ty as he lands the win and improves his record to 5-4. and four. For our second fight at Titan FC, we have Lucas Marte showing a 6-1 record, and he's up against Jonaski Soho, who has an 11-3 record. So this event was actually a co-promotion with Fighting Force, and this fight is for the fight Fighting Force lightweight title, and I don't even know where to begin. This fight's first two rounds are an insane back and forth, seeing both fighters get knocked, rocked, and all out exhausted, and you can tell they are both fighting for their life for that belt. Once in a while. Oh. Oh. Wow, you see that nice oh, counter man. shot, the step back and the big shot, and he has him on the ropes right now. Oh, look at Martin, looks like he was hurt. Took a little bit of a break. Oh! And the ball piece flies oh out. God. Towards the end of the second round, Soho lands this ground and pound and actually sneaks in a rear naked choke that lasts until the end of the round. And holy 
hell. We've got a contender for the best regional fight to date for this year. After just a barn burner and round two coming to an end, Lucas is being inspected by the doctors. Unfortunately though, he is just not able to continue and the doctors stop it and this fight is over. Soho becomes your new fighting force lightweight champion and put on one hell of a performance to do so. Off to visit our friends at Combate Global in Miami, Florida. We have Jordan Beltran with a 10 and 6 record, taking on Jose Zaraus with a 21 and 7 record. It's just a normal, solid, great main event for the first round, but just over a minute into the second, and here we go. Ahí buscando, bueno, Israel está buscando. Sweet baby Jesus, he was winding up to take the head off of Jose with this uppercut and just about did it. Absolutely crazy knockout and the ground and pound to secure the stoppage win for Beltran. He improves his record to 11 and 6 and scores this sweet highlight for his resume. Heading to Fury FC 46 in Houston, Texas, we are joined in attendance by the Dana White and the Looking for a Fight crew for two fights. For the first, we have a bantamweight title fight which sees defending belt holder Leo Mana Martinez showing a 7-2 record, going against Jose Johnson with a 12-6 record. If Dana and his crew are in the building and you want to try to impress them, this might be a good way to do so. Jose Johnson's a great striker. I mean, that's his... Oh, oh my goodness! There it yeah. is! Yep. Only 32 seconds in and Johnson goes to sleep. With about four solid hooks, the first being the end all, Martinez gets a fantastic knockout and secures this win, improving his record to 8-2 and, and still your Fury FC Bantamweight champion. Going to our last fight from Fury FC, we have a flyweight fight between Sean Solis, who has a 5-3 and three record, facing off with Paris Moran, who has a 3-1 and one record. We are nearing the halfway mark of round two, and check it out. Moran wears it really well. Like, oh, oh my goodness! Get me. Oh yeah, a perfectly timed standing switch knee and yet another way to impress Uncle Dana when he's in the building. Just absolutely confusing Sean as he went to protect himself from the left knee only to be surprised by a hard right knee to instantly knock him out. Paris improves his record to 4-1, and one, gains a great victory for his highlight reel and hopefully can keep some momentum going coming off of this win. Moving to our final event, we have LFA 107 in Sioux Falls, South Dakota for two fights. Don't worry, Kaposa's KO of the week is coming. First up, we have a fight between Taylor Malden and Amber De La Huron, both making their pro debut. These submissions always make me cringe, but only a minute and a half into this fight, and this is what we get. Oh, that's a tight knee oh, bar. Wow, that's a really this. tight knee bar. Oh my gosh. Over and out. Ah yes, the good old fashioned knee bar, which thankfully for my sake, Amber taps almost instantly to hopefully prevent any outstanding damage done to her knee from this tight knee bar that Taylor secures in a beautiful transition. She makes one hell of a debut and gains her first win as a pro. We save the best for last, so here we go with Kapoza's KO of the week to finish us out strong. We have the co-main event, which has George Garcia with a 9 and 4 record and representing Black House MMA going against Ricardo Diaz who also has a 9 and 4 record and representing Kings MMA. Diaz making an impressive first round shows us a flashy 360 guard pass which eventually turns into a heel hook that I don't know how Garcia didn't tap to but he survived the round. So now we're starting round 2 and let the games begin. Through that big right punch. So he needs to keep him on his heels. Oh yeah, baby. Big right hook followed by a deadly running knee straight to the chin of Garcia and he is out. Now, look at how insanely close this was to being an illegal knee as Garcia, within not even a second before the knee hits, takes his knee off the canvas, making him a legal opponent. Thank God we didn't have another fight ending in an illegal blow, and Diaz gains the win, improves his record to 10-4, and four, and hopefully we see more of him in the future. Another fantastic week of highlights, and we will never stop praising your name, Kaposa, for helping us with this 
this, so please go give him a follow on Twitter at Grabaka underscore Hitman, and support him on his Patreon at patreon.com backslash Kaposa. And a huge thank you to all of these amazing organizations that made this video today for hosting these events for our entertainment, and to the fighters, winners, and losers, and we will see you all on the next video. 